Hello, and welcome back to the Brightspace training series. This is module three, Communications in Brightspace. Today, we will explore the communication tools available to faculty and students. To look at those tools, we're gonna to click on the Communications tab in the navigation bar. The tools available are announcements, email, discussions, calendar, class list, and FAQ. We are on the landing page of a course in Brightspace. In the landing page, you'll find widgets for some of these communication tools. For example, we have the announcements widget, and this is where students will see announcements displayed when they log into a course. There's also a calendar, and there's the activity feed, which is another communication tool that we will explore in this module. So let's get started with the first tool on the list, announcements. Announcements are very popular and very commonly used by faculty to communicate important, time-sensitive, critical information with students. When you go into the announcements tool, you'll see an option for new announcements. You'll see a button with more actions, and then you'll also have a search bar. So if you have a long list of announcements or if students are looking for a specific announcement, they can use uh, the search bar to find for uh, find specific information. So if I click on write the word project, for example, it's gonna filter the list for me uh, with the announcements that, that have that information. And I can clear the search and go back to my full list. Announcements are organized in a table and uh, you'll see the title of the announcement. You'll see the start date. So that's when it became available to students an end date if there is one, and then status. Uh, announcements can be saved as drafts. If they're published, that means they're available to students, and they can also be scheduled to be sent at a later date. Under the title, you'll see the content of the announcement, but you can always click on the title of the announcement, and that's going to allow you to edit it, or if you are on student view, then it will allow you to see the full announcement on one page. You'll notice that some of these announcements say dismissed next to them. And that means that they're no longer available in the landing page, but they're available here. So either faculty or students can come back to the announcements tool area to see all the announcements, but they're not available in the landing page. However, you can restore them and have them available in the landing page as well. So if I click on the Chevron, there's an option to restore. And if I go back to my landing page, now my announcement is available here. This is very important for students to know about uh, because if a student dismisses an announcement, it disappears from this area. However, you might make changes or update an announcement. And if that's the case, you would want to restore it for students so that they don't miss any important information that you added or changed in that previous announcement. I'll show you how to do that. So this one is called Final Projects Due Next Week. And it says that they're due on Friday, but let's say that they're actually due by Thursday. So we have to change the information. This is important information. If a student already read this announcement and they dismissed it, they won't see the important change. So here there's an option that says major edit, send a notification and restore it for those who dismissed it. So I'm gonna click that it was a major edit and then I will update. And if I go back to my landing page, the new information is available. If a student dismissed this announcement, it will become visible again. And if they have notifications turned on for updates from announcements, they will also receive an email for that. So now let's create a new announcement. I'm gonna click on new announcement. And to get started, I must add a headline or a title. So let's say this is an announcement about a discussion post that is due next week. So discussion posts due next week. And here I have my content editor with all the tools that you have when you're creating content. Um, and I will highlight specifically the quick links, which I think are very useful for announcements. So hello students. 
this is a reminder that your discussion posts are due next week by Friday, December 8th. So a quick link allows you to add a link to an item that exists in the course already. For example, it could be content that you want your students to read. It could be a calendar activity. It could be a discussion. It could be a quiz or a rubric. So what I'll do is that I'll select the text that I want to add the link to. So in this case, discussion posts. And then I'm going to go into the quick link and select the discussion tool. And then I have all the discussions that I have previously created. And uh, let's say it's this the one, this is the one that I want to, to add to this uh, announcement. So here it is, this week three discussion. And now there is a link that takes my students directly to that post. And um, additionally, review the materials in week four before our class next week. Again, I can select the text to review the materials in week four is the text that I want to select. I'm going back to the quick links. This time I will select content week four and I'll select the first item on my week four. Okay, there we go. So now this is done. Thank you and see you soon. So this is my announcement. Um, now, if I scroll down, there's options for availability. By default, the start date will become available. So that would be the moment when the an announcement goes public. Uh, by default, it's, it's the time that you're creating the announcement, but you can always change it to a future date. You can say today, or you can say now, and it will update the time as well. But let's say that you want this to go out tomorrow, Friday, December 1st. You can do that as well. You can also add an end date, and this would remove the announcement uh, after a certain date. You can add a file, record audio, or video. These are fantastic tools to make your announcements more personal. A great example would be the first announcement you send to your students to welcome them to the course and to get to know you. You can record yourself in Brightspace uh, so that students can put a face and a voice to your name and these videos and audio recordings will create automatic captions to make them accessible to students. Then there's also additional release conditions. So you might choose to make this announcement available to students once they meet another condition or criteria. For example, students need to complete a quiz before they get an announcement on next steps, or maybe they have to submit a project so that they can receive more information about, about what's happening next. So just like you do with content, you can use release conditions for announcements as well. Then you have the option to publish right away, to save it as a draft, or cancel. So actually, I set this up to be available tomorrow. So if I click on publish, it will actually not publish yet. In the status, it says scheduled. I can always go back in. And I'll see here that this announcement is scheduled to be published on Friday, but maybe I changed my mind. I'm gonna, I want to make it available now. So I click on the calendar, I select it now, and then I update my announcement. So now my announcement is here on the table. It says published, it says when it was published. And if I go back to my landing page, my announcement is here as a student, as I'm, when I'm done, if I already read it, I can dismiss it or I can leave it here. But you'll see that uh, there either are a lot of announcements here, then this widget will become longer and longer and longer. If students click on the title of the announcement, it will open the announcement in a full page. And maybe this is an older announcement, they can dismiss it and now they only have the first announcement visible to them. One important thing that I'd like to uh, remind faculty about announcements is that announcements are not sent automatically to student emails. 
So if that is something that you'd like to recommend to your students, what you can tell them is to go to their profiles, click on notifications, and under instant notifications, they can select to get an email every time an announcement is available or every time an announcement is updated. This is an option that each student has to select individually. This cannot be done by the faculty. It's the student's choice to what types of announcements or notifications they want to receive on their email. Students can also uh, turn on notifications for assignments, information for content that has been created, discussions, grades, and quizzes. So again, the recommendation is that you ask students to turn on notifications for new announcements and updated announcements. Okay, so that is the announcements tool. The next tool is email. You can send email emails to your students from Brightspace. You have access to an address book where the list of all your student emails is are, are available. Um, and then they can respond to you, but when they respond to you, this will happen through your Outlook inbox. So the first communication can happen in Brightspace, and then you'll have an area called sent mail where you can see uh, a record of all the communications that you have uh, sent through Brightspace. But after the first email, the rest will happen in Outlook. And you have an option to use the address book and add the email of your student. One important thing to note is that I clicked on address book, I get this pop-up window and I selected the name of my students, but then I have to select whether I want to add this um, email to the two CC or BCC fields. If I don't do that, it will not add the email to the correct place. So I'm gonna click on two. Now the email is there and then I can click on add recipients. I can change the subject. Again, uh, you also have all of these features uh, to format your email. You also have the option to add quick links directly through the email. So if you want to, uh, to send a specific link to a group of students or a student in particular, you can do that as well. If you scroll down, you'll see the option to upload a document to record audio or video. So that, that's another opportunity to make this communication more personal. And you can also choose an existing um, file that, that is in the Brightspace course already. You can also change the priority of the email from low to normal to high. And you can then send the email to the student. One other thing that I'd like to mention is that there's the settings option here that allows you to select whether you want to receive a copy of each outgoing email as well. And you can also uh, personalize your email signature so that Every time you write an email, the, the signature would, will be consistent. And finally, you might wonder if there's an option to send an email to the whole class, and there is. I'm gonna go to a sample course where I have more emails to show you how that works. These are not real student emails. This is a sample course with faculty members only. So if I go to email, um, you, you'll see that the address book is more comprehensive. It has the emails of all the students. Uh, but this might take a long time to select page by page. So for example, if I select the first page and I say BCC, then the emails have been added, but only the emails that are shown on this first page. And you might have multiple page pages of students. As for example, here, I just selected the first page of students. But there is another tool called the class list. The class list, it's under communication as well, shows you all of your students with their first and last name, username, email, and their role in the course. Also, it shows you when was the last time that a student accessed the course. And there is an option for enrollment statistics, but also email class list. If I click on email class list, it will show me a list of all of my students and then an option to send an email to all of the students at once. So you'll see that you'll get another uh, window uh, to compose your email and all of the emails have been added to BCC field. If I scroll down, 
I have the option to change the subject of my email and the body as well, add attachments or videos and change the priority. So it works the same way as a, a regular email. The only difference is that uh, you'll go through the class list option so that you select all students at once. I'll go back to the class list to show you a few other things that are available here. You'll see a green dot next to the student's name, and that means that that student is online at the moment. And you'll also see this tool that has a person icon and a gear icon, and that means that the student has accommodations uh, or that you have added accommodations for the student. So I'm going to look for myself in this course. Um, and I have added accommodations uh, for me as well. Again, remember, this is just a sample course. These are not real students, and these are just uh, examples of how the tools work. If I click on my name, I can see uh, an option to edit accommodations. And from here, I can select uh, to modify the time limit that this student gets for quizzes. So I can say that this student will get twice the time of the original quiz time for all of the quizzes in Brightspace. This is the only type of accommodation that can be done uh, generally for all tests in Brightspace. However, when you create assignments or when you create quizzes, you'll have more options for accommodation, accommodations such as changing availability dates, due dates, number of attempts, and access to lockdown browser or, or opting out of, lo of lockdown browser and things like that. So again, from the class list, only the timing for the quizzes can be modified. Okay, so let's continue. So that was a class list. Let's go back to discussions. So discussions are a fantastic tool to promote collaboration and communication between faculty and students and between students and, 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 and their classmates. In Brightspace, there are two main structures uh, to create your discussions. When you click on new, you'll see that there's an option for a forum and then there's an option for a new topic. The forum is the first step or the bigger structure to organize your discussions. Within the forum, you can have one or as many topics as you want. So if you have weekly discussions or or different types of discussions that can be grouped together, then you would create a forum and then you would have topic for each one of those discussion uh, conversations or activities. But you might have a one-off type of discussion. In that case, you still need to create a forum and then within that forum, you create a topic. So let's say, for example, uh, that you want to create an introductory discussion for students to get to know one another and to share a bit about their goals and expectations for the course. In that case, I created a forum called Introduce Yourself to Your Classmates. And then within that forum, I have my topic called Introduce Yourself as well. So it can seem a little bit repetitive, but that's the way the tool works. And in this case, there's only one discussion under this forum. Uh, and the discussion, the topic is where the conversations actually happen. But you might have, um, I'm actually going to go to a different course where I have other examples. I'm going to go to my sandbox and into discussions. So again, I had my introduce yourself, introduce yourself to your classmates as a forum. And then I have the topic called introduce yourself. But you might have something called weekly discussions. And within that weekly discussions, you have topics for week one, week two, week three, week four. Or you might have journal reflections that occur throughout the semester. And then you have a week one, week two, week three, week four. Um, so let's uh, start by creating a new forum. Let's call this forum um, weekly discussions. So within this forum, I'm going to have multiple discussion topics, one for each week or one for each activity that I create. You can automatically create a new topic in this forum with the same title. If you only have one topic within that forum, then you can choose this option. For example, if it's an, uh, an introductory reflection or maybe that's the um, end of the semester, end of semester reflection, 
and discussion. And then it's only one, this, one topic within this forum. You can say, create a new topic in this forum with the same title. You can do that. You can write a description for the forum and, and that would be more applicable if you have multiple topics within that forum. Otherwise, you might want to skip this and just write the description in the topic itself. And then you have some options to allow anonymous posts, for example. Uh, you can also uh, select that users must start a thread before they can read and reply to other threads in each topic. This is a very common selection for faculty in the case that they want students to first um, come up with their own thoughts and their own position or ideas, and then they can read and reply to others in that same discussion. You can also have an option to, uh, to approve individual posts before they're uh, displayed to the forum, but that requires, of course, a bit more time. And every time a student submits their post, you have to come in and, um, and ap approve it as a moderator. And you can also display the forum descriptions in the topics. For now, I will not choose any of those options. I will go into save and add topic. So I selected the option uh, that my topic was the same. No, it didn't work. Let me let me click on cancel. Okay, so that was a big mistake. <laughs> I clicked on cancel and I have to start again. So I'll do that again. New forum. And I'm going to call this um, end of semester reflection and discussion. Okay, so I'm going to create a new topic in the forum with the same title, no description, and then I won't choose any of these options. I'm going to click on save and close. So I, uh, I save that and I closed it. If I scroll to the bottom, I should have, oh, it did create it for me. So that was my mistake. It did create the, the reflection and this forum and the topic at the bottom of the list. So that's good to know that the, the new discussions and the new forums will, will appear at the bottom. So I have a duplication. This is actually a very good learning experience. And I will actually click here and I'm going to delete this um, forum and I'm gonna delete the discussion inside of it because it's a duplication. Now I have it. So I have my end of semester reflection and discussion and then I have my end of semester reflection and discussion topic but I might need to edit this topic because I didn't go through the settings there. So here it is, end of semester reflection and discussion. The forum is here. I can always change the forum. So maybe I, I put this topic in the, right, in the wrong forum. I can either create a new forum or I can explore some of the forms that I have created in advance. By default, this is on ungraded discussion, um, in, and that might be the case for many of your discussions. But if you want to add a grade to it, you just click here, and I'm going to say this is worth five points, and it's in the gradebook. I can edit or link it to something that I already created in the gradebook. That's the case when an instructor likes to set up the gradebook first and then create the items. You can say it's not in the gradebook. It actually has some points. It's something you want your students to submit, but it's not added to the gradebook. Or you can just make it an ungraded activity. And here in the description, I will add the information that I want my students to read through as they participate in this reflection activity. So it's um, the end of the semester is approaching. Please reflect on your learning journey. What was challenging? What, what was your favorite part? What are some of the most important takeaways from this course? How will this course uh, support you in your academic and professional journeys? Maybe these are some of the questions that I want to ask my students. You can also, of course, uh, uh, share links to other documents or areas in the course. You can upload documents. Uh, you can even record a video by clicking on the plus sign um, or here, sorry, on on the insert stuff, there's an option to 
add a video note. So if you want your students, if you want to um, elaborate more, you have all of these wonderful tools to, to add the description for the discussion. And then on the right hand side, we have some settings. We have availability dates and conditions. So when will this become available? It will become available tomorrow. Um, you can also decide what happens before the state. So it will be visible with access restricted or maybe visible with submissions restricted or hidden altogether. And you can add availability dates to the calendar. So this is something that I'd like to do so that my students see it in the calendar. And the end date is going to be uh, the 15th. So my students have two weeks to work on this activity. You can add release conditions as well, and you can add group or section restrictions. So in case that you want to have different discussions for different groups, you can do that here as well. Post and completion. So do you want default participation? You want learners to hide their names from other learners? Learners must, must start a thread before they can view or reply to other threads. And then post must be approved. So the same options you had for the forum, you can see those options for the topic as well. Evaluation and feedback. You can add rubrics. You can manage and add learning objectives that are connected to this uh, activity. You can allow evaluation of individual posts. And that means that, let's say a student uh, creates an, a first post, but also responds to two other classmates, you would be able to evaluate them separately, or otherwise you can just evaluate them as one piece, as one submission. That's another important information you might wanna add in the description. Please post a first um, a reflection and then respond to two other to two to two other classmates with something you may have in common, something you found surprising or interesting. Okay, so in this case, I'm asking my students to um, create a first post of their own reflection and then engage with two other classmates um, in the discussion. And then that's it. So I'm done. I'm going to save and close. And now if I scroll to the bottom, I have my end of semester reflection and discussion. I have the availability dates. I have this icon here uh, that is like a ribbon that indicates that this has an assessment and then the instructions for my students. And here, as your students start responding to the posts, uh, you'll see how many threads have been created, how many posts have been created. So a thread, it's usually started by each student. Each student will start a thread with their first reflection or their first post, and then students can respond to that particular student in that thread. So then you'll have probably one thread per student, and then you'll have posts associated with each thread. With each thread. And then you'll see who was the last student to post. So at the moment, because this is a sandbox, I don't have any posts here, but you'll see an option for statistics. So if you go into statistics, you'll get some interesting information about um, how students are engaging with these discussions. There's also subscriptions. And, and that means that if you subscribe to a discussion, you'll get um, a notification once something's happening in that discussion uh, or and a summary of the activities that are happening in those discussions. And then you have group and section restrictions. Um, so you, you can see, for example, that this topic in particular, presentation groups, group one, is restricted to only group one. So if you create groups in advance, uh, you can then also have discussions for each specific group. So that's great for group projects or or different topics that students might be exploring, you can separate it into groups. So that is the discussion tool. After that, we have the calendar. And the calendar is connected uh, to the assignments, tests, and any items that have dates in them. So for example, right now we're looking at the calendar for my sandbox. This is the name of the course where I am. We're looking at the month of November and we can see that there is a test that's happening at 9.36 a.m. on Thursday, 
And then there's uh, on Friday, the discussion becomes available. You can see it this way, but you can also see it here on this view that there's a, a dot under the number in the calendar. So if I click there, uh, it will show me the things that are happening or it will take me to that particular date. So I'm, if I click there, I get a pop-up of what this information is. So this is a turning in assignment with rubric. Um, and then on the first, it's the, the reflection discussion becomes available. So students can uh, see what's happening in their courses in the calendar. Um, you can also see all your calendars at once. Oh, sorry about that. Let me go back. I have a little chevron here so I can uh, show all calendars. And now my calendar has become a bit more busy with uh, different um, things that are occurring throughout the course. So for example, this greenish, um, light green item, if I click on it, it's a financial literacy workshop that it's happening very soon. So if I go here, I can see that that actually belongs to the George Brown College uh, calendar. And the, the darker green is uh, from another course on Universal Design for Learning. The orange is the one that I was showing you earlier. So students and you will see the events in your calendars color-coded. Um, you can, of course, um, create new events. For example, something that um, that you want to add to the calendar, you can do it here. So you can create an event for your sandbox. You can add the title, you can add a description, uh, and then you can add the dates and to whom you want to, to show this event. So the calendar is another great tool uh, to help students stay on track of their assignments, tests, and different activities. If I go back to my landing page, you'll see the calendar showing what's happening on today, Thursday, November 30th. I can open it. It shows me a calendar. And now just below, it says events for November 30th. There's one thing happening. I can expand it and it shows me what it is. I can click on the first, same thing. It's gonna show me what's happening on the first and I can see upcoming events and it will show me all the things that are occurring in the next couple of days. So that is the calendar. Students uh, will find it here, but they will also have a widget on their landing page. And every course has its own calendar. But you can also, as I showed you, see all events at once. You can choose one calendar in particular, or you can choose to see all the calendars. Other things that I like to point out is that you can see it as an agenda day by day. You can see what's happening today specifically, what's happening this week, what's happening this month, or you can also see the items as a list. So you have many options on how you'd like to see your calendar items. There's also a search events tool over here on the right hand side. Next is the class list, which we already explored. So the final tool is the FAQ. The FAQ is an area where you can create questions and answers for your students. If there are important questions that your students ask you frequently, then you can add them to the FAQ section and you can guide your students to this area for this important information. If you find yourself responding to the same question many times, then this is a great solution for that. So you can create a new category, you can organize your questions by category, or you can just create uh, single questions as well. So a new question is um, instructor information. I do have a category. So you can select a previously created category or create a new category. Maybe this one is about um, extensions. So are extensions allowed? And we can say, yes, please communicate to the teacher if you need an extension and let the teacher know how many days uh, you'll need. Remember, for, for the final project, there will only be 
an extension of 48 hours because I have to provide feedback to the students and submit grades in a timely fashion, for example. So this is my question about extensions. And you can elaborate, you can share links, you can share more information. So I'm gonna save my question. So now I have uh, instructor information as a category, and then I have the extensions category. So you can create your FAQ for your class. Finally, let's take a look at the activity feed, which is not located under communication, but it's an interesting tool to know about. So right now the activity feed is collapsed. I can click on the Chevron and expand this widget. And I'll show you what this looks like. The activity feed is like a social media feed in your course. In, in this case, the activity feed can be originated by the teacher. So the teacher can create a new post um, and you can share a message with your students. You can add um, files and links and videos. So, and then you can allow for comments. So students can respond to this activity feed. It's different from a discussion because it's meant to be a more informal place to share resources, interesting ideas, articles, videos that you find that are relevant to the course. Or maybe it can also be a place for social interactions um, and to create community uh, with, with students. So for example, I created uh, this one on a, on a YouTube video and then my students can respond to it. Or maybe you're, you're welcoming your students to the course uh, and you can ask them, what are you most excited about? One thing to, to, to note though, is that when students are responding to comments, they can only respond with text. So the first post, allows you to be more thorough and gives you more choices on how you present your content, but the, co the comments are only text. So if I go to student preview, for example, I'll show you what that would look like. I have my activity feed. I can create a post as a student. So hello classmates, I found this great podcast that I, that I would like to share to share with you. And then this is the link for the podcast. I'm going to put it here. And then I can post it as a student. And then my students can respond to it. I've heard of faculty members or coordinators that use it to share important information about the program or job postings that have become available that are relevant to the students in the course. If you are using Brightspace as a community space, then this is a great place to share resources and connect with one another. Very simple. It's not um, as robust as a discussion, but it's a great place for quick uh, and fun communications. You want your students to share um, the same thing, share something you are looking forward to during the holiday season then you can just add it as a post and students can respond to that here and it becomes public so that everybody can see uh, what their classmates shared. Again, that is an optional tool um, that you can explore and it might be helpful uh, to build community and, and to share uh, important or, or interesting information with your students. So we have come to the end of module three on communications. I hope this has been helpful. And if you have more questions, please feel free to connect to the TLX to get more support. Good luck with Brightspace and goodbye.